and back out to the National Warplane Museum. Yeah, just talking about the Boogie Woogie Bugle Bash benefiting the Friendly Home happening uh, on Saturday. And the star of it is going to be Whiskey 7. <laughs> and do you say there she is? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. So like a boat where you refer to it as the she? <laughs> from the uh, National Warplane Museum. But do we call planes she, Todd? I'm not sure what's the lingo. <laughs> they are absolutely she, but I won't go into on the air why that is. <laughs> okay. But uh, it's a beautiful yeah. morning in Geneseo. I'm glad you're all here with us. Uh, it's, it's striking. It is striking to see uh, that plane behind you. If people haven't heard the history, do you have like a 30 second recap of the history of this plane? Sure, sure. Just very briefly, uh, this particular airplane, Whiskey 7, which is, is part of a larger fleet at the National Airplane Museum, was actually the lead airplane in the second wave that crossed the English Channel on D-Day. Uh, and in addition to uh, that notable piece of its, of its history, it also participated in the Berlin Airlift. And uh, this particular airplane had the opportunity last year to return to Normandy for a historic 70th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. Did you so get this, to be a part uh, of that This airplane by is a very active airplane. I'm sorry? Did you get to be a part of that trip last year? Well, I wasn't part of that trip. Uh, I'm one of many pilots and uh, quite a few volunteers that keep this airplane flying. And uh, we, uh, we host and, and participate in many, many events throughout the year. So while a crew was able to take it to Normandy, uh, there are other crews that participate in a variety of fundraisers and air shows throughout the rest of the year. Wait, so you, you fly this. What is that like? It, it, it's, uh, there, there's uh, very few words to describe the privilege of flying any of these aircraft. Uh, those of us who do it, do it uh, to honor veterans and to continue sharing a story with youth and uh, with adults who may have not had exposure or listened enough to grandpa and grandma's stories to remain connected with what these aircraft did. So the ability to take this airplane to events, keep it in front of the public and share these stories is uh, just a remarkable privilege. And every time you sit in the cockpit and look out through the windshield, you wonder what they were thinking on that uh, hazy day in 1944. So it's a, it's a tremendous privilege. So people can come down to Geneseo and check it out. For those folks who do, as they climb on board as you are, is there, is there one or two things that people are uh, just surprised by? Is there one thing that always sticks out? Well, they're very... The, the most popular question is, this thing still flies? <laughs> and uh, then they get an opportunity to see it. We're, we're, we're very active with a number of parachute teams. And, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you get a, mo a modern parachute team and you give them the opportunity to jump out of this historic airplane, it's, it's uh, just fantastic to watch the tears in their eyes and their reaction to be able to uh, uh, jump out of this, uh, this airplane. But, uh, you, you know, there are so many people. We may uh, make gas stops in small towns in the Midwest, and, and people will arrive at fuel pumps with their photo albums and dress up to come see us because they want to share their stories. And at some point, uh, their parents or their grandparents have been on a DC-3 or been a pilot or a stewardess during an era uh, that uh, they remember with fondness. So it's, uh, it's exciting to hear and share in those stories and be able to meet every one of those people. Uh Oh, wow, what an awesome job you have. Uh, my question, uh, your, the profile must have really been lifted within the last year after this uh, uh, trip over to Europe. You guys must, your schedule must be packed. Well, you know, it, it's, it's exciting, and the mission that was flown last year was just a tremendous opportunity, but it's also a, only one component of the National Warplane Museum. Uh, we have... Uh, aircraft, we, we, we really continue to record and tell the stories of veterans. Uh, we uh, really are making a great deal of effort to continue to bring people to Geneseo, New York, to stay connected with these stories. So while Whiskey 7 is uh, very notable and extremely historic, uh, the National War Plane Museum certainly has a larger uh, story to tell and uh, we're excited to be uh, focused on that scope and, and continuing to connect Western New York with what we do. Well, our tour leader today, Todd Cameron, thanks so much. Wow, what a job you have. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I love that. The question, does it still fly? <laughs> yes, I think that's so and neat. You, you might look up and see it sometimes yeah. as soon as it makes its way up to Rochester. All right, coming up, anchor it.